The USAID Resilient Waters Program aimed to build more resilient and water secure southern African communities and ecosystems through improving management of transboundary natural resources and increasing access to safe drinking water and sanitation services. The geographic focus was on the Limpopo River Basin, home to 18 million people living in parts of South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. The Okavango River Basin, with its population of 1 million people in Angola, Namibia and Botswana, and in the Buzi, Pungwe and Save Tri Basin, with a population of 5.5 million people across parts of Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Overlaying the Limpopo and Okavango River Basins, the program also worked in the Great Limpopo Transfrontier Conservation Area and the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area. These videos introduce some of the Resilient Waters grantees and the progress that was made within the five-year program period from 2018 to 2023. All right, my name is Rudolf Chavionja. I work for Integrated Rural Development and Nature Conservation, which is in short IRDNC. I work in up north of Namibia in Sambezi region, based in Babwata National Park. We, we are involved in community-based natural resource management, uh, supporting conservancies in terms of establishment of conservancies, uh, providing support in terms of natural resource management, because we work in three thematic areas, which is uh, uh, NRM, um, and then the second one is institutional, and governance, and then the third is enterprise of business development. Yeah, in terms of the project specifics, we were supporting, as I said, we work in the Babata National Park. So we work with the Karamashan Association in helping them in the areas of institutional development, uh, which we looked at helping them to come up with benefit distribution plans, uh, financial plans in terms of managing the resources they gain from um, the concessions they have with the Minister of Environment. And of course, with Karamashan, they have also, in the area of NRM, they have uh, game guards, which we are giving them trainings program. You have a management committee also, it built in their capacity in terms of managing the, their institution. Um, we also look at climate change activities, which we're looking at uh, climate agriculture related we identified farmers who were earlier, maybe also some of them were trained before. So we also trained them in, in, in CA activities. Uh, they came up with some gardening projects. Now, mindful you, some of these activities are rain-fed gardens. Um, some of them because of maybe of their surroundings, the water plants are close to them. So we have some continuation in some of those activities that we are doing. Yeah, so. And lastly, also, we, we look at the issue of government and partnership, the ministry specific with the Karamashan Association. So we, we get up with a, a draft a memorandum of agreement, which is in the process uh, submitted to the um, prosecutor general office for just to look at the legal terms in terms of that document. And then that, that document per se will look at the rights of the communities that are living in the park so and also looking at their responsibility when it comes to wildlife management. Uh, Karamashan uh, stands for the residents of Babuata National Park, predominantly the queer speaking people. Um, it represents 12 villages um, in the whole Babuata and you also have communities other than, than the queer speaking which are humble kushus um, yeah and they represent as the mouth peak of the community uh, as partners to the ministry of environment and forestry one thing that we learned is that the community participation and also involvement is very critical when it comes to programs that you are initiating especially when you have a marginalized community like the quest speaking so you need really to also understand the background in terms of their indigenous knowledge in terms of things that they know and that you can base your program on that as an organization we we 
our, our motto is actually to walk the walk with the community. So in terms of whatever we do, because we are looking at making sure benefits that derive from what you are engaged in the communities, it reaches the, the last person in the whole entire community. So participation is very critical. Uh, and also making sure you understand uh, their visions, their understanding of what we want to do or what the project wants to support them with. Normally, impact you see in the long, in the long term, but is when you see that communities are taking ownership. Uh, for a very good example, you know, one of the key uh, project activity was to come up with benefit distribution plan. I, I've seen that uh, communities now are able now to, especially in Karamashan, they, they are involved in making up their own budgets, of which they included 50%, above 50% 50, 50 of that budget is to, goes to community benefit. And I think it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a twist in the mindset of the community that there's an importance of others benefiting from that. Yeah.